Well, I'm very excited today to be joined by Liz Bittner from Travel South USA to uh, explore the Drive America partnership that we um, are working on now with Travel South and Coastal Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina, as well as Coastal Georgia, to really showcase what the region has to offer in terms of outdoor experiences that really have become, I think, the um, the go-to experience uh, during uh, this COVID era. And there's so much that the South um, uh, at large, but also these three destinations and their coastal regions have uh, to offer. Um, so Liz, I, what do you think is so special about these destinations, given what we've been going through and what people are able to really experience um, driving there uh, during this fall, during this autumn, when, uh, when they can really see, uh, I think, uh, a destination that maybe they didn't think of before at that time. Right. Well, so clearly, you know, this whole um, 2020 has just been sort of an upside down of what normally would happen. And, you know, we're so proud of the fall that we norm that we have um, that allows us to have sort of the mountains and the beaches and the warm weather um, combined with the beautiful fall colors. And so in this year, like no other, um, we're inviting of domestic U.S. travelers to sort of explore the coastline from North Carolina all the way down to um, the Golden Isles of Georgia um, because there's such a great uniqueness about the those coastal destinations, um, you know, and the little fishing villages and the great historic cities that are along the coast. And, um, you know, a lot of times folks don't know, especially the travel agency community, they're so used to focusing a little more on um, international destinations. Um, but I really feel like this is the year that we can um, offer not only these beautiful destinations, but the opportunity to sort of be in nature and have the um, fresh air and all the social distancing um, that is required in during this pandemic time and still um, enjoy a little bit of breathability in this very challenging year. So um, uh, thank you to ATI and the Drive America program for allowing us to figure out how to deliver that. No, thank you. And it's really is a great opportunity because as you said, you know, the domestic travel agents have really, um, their bread and butter in the past has been cruise and international. And that's kind of been um, disabled temporarily because of the pandemic. So we are really working with destinations um, uh, and are very excited to be working with, um, you know, yourselves and these three destinations to, to showcase how that can be done through the Drive America platform. This is such an important um, relationship and a, a partnership, not just because, you know, I'm fully biased on, I think that the South and, and the coastal destinations are absolutely like the cream of the crop um, of destinations in the United States. But I really believe that, that, that our travel industry as a whole um, has been so severely um, impacted by the pandemic and then this you know, economic crisis. And it will be the travel agency community as well as the destination marketing organizations that will be the, the foundation of the recovery of the entirety of the United States. Um, yeah, today is the day to actually for travel agents to have commissionable opportunities to sell um, things that where people can get in their car and drive or just a short hop. You know, a lot of the airlines are, are gearing up for these, um, you know, uh, short hop flights. And, and yep. we're there for the destinations, the hotels, the restaurants, the attractions. And so um, it's just a win-win all the way around. I couldn't agree more also about the role of the travel agent coming out of this, right, in educating their customers about what the rules are or regulations are, requirements are, going to each of these destinations sometimes that's not easily um you know searchable online or it, maybe it's not you know as reputable as so it's important for us to empower destinations yeah. and travel agents to empower travel consumers with that information um so i think that that will be true through next year for sure it will be the new normal in all things and so um we're just sort of getting ahead of the pack and yeah, um, yeah anything that we can do to restore consumer confidence so that people are back out on the road traveling is a good thing all the way around oh you agreed there well thank you so much liz and we look forward to hearing from the destination uh partners that you're um as part of travel south that we're focusing on today and i'll let you introduce them oh, well terrific thanks so much nick and thank you again to ATI and Drive America because this is just a great partnership.
So greetings y'all and welcome to the Travel South USA region and the ATI webinar for the travel agency community. As I mentioned with Nick, we are thrilled to partner with American Tours Drive America platform and feature flexible itineraries along the coastal Carolinas and Georgia. Before the pandemic hit, your agency was very likely to be adept at selling Rome, Paris, and London. Well, we have all those small towns in the Travel South region also, Rome, Georgia, Paris Island, South Carolina, and New London, North Carolina. And while for now, many of your clients won't be traveling overseas, we appreciate you allowing us to reintroduce the authentic, the charming, and the friendly South. On a side note, this 12 state region is the same geographic size as continental Europe. So from Alabama to West Virginia, to, uh, from Arkansas to Kentucky, Missouri to Mississippi, Louisiana to Tennessee, and Virginia down the coastal Carolinas and Georgia, the American South is filled with all things that make a true American road trip special. Food, music, culture, history, quirky stops, beautiful scenery, and that one of a kind feel of the open road. And so all of these states, are available with over 3,000 hotels and attractions, all commissionable through the Drive America platform because nothing defines the American spirit like the call of the open road. Today, I've asked three experts to join me as we guide you through what I think is a very special region of the United States, North Carolina, South Carolina, and the coast of Georgia, each offering a five-day itinerary selection and some bonus tips at the end of each section. These itineraries can be combined, rearranged, reversed, depending on where your clients want to start and where they want to end. And so let's begin. First meet Heidi Walters from North Carolina. Heidi is the part, Director of Partner and Industry Relations for Visit North Carolina. She's traveled all 543 miles of interstate and back roads in North Carolina through the Appalachian Mountains in the western part of the state, the Piedmont region in the center part of the state, and now is going to share with you a very special area, the pristine beaches and coastal fishing towns of coastal Carolina. Take it away, Heidi. Okay, thanks, Liz. Um, it's great to be with everyone today. I am Heidi Walters with Visit North Carolina, and we are here to talk about the coast. Um, so, I'll tell you about how I became familiar with the North Carolina coast. About uh, 32 years ago or so, we decided to vacation to the coast. And as, um, as many people know, I had never seen the ocean before. So this was gonna be the first time that I had ever been to the ocean. Um, came down here, absolutely fell in love with the North Carolina coast. Just the places that are still wild, the places that um, you can just reconnect. And it really was, um, as our tagline says, one of our firsts that last with me. And just a couple years later, then we made the decision to relocate and move to North Carolina. And so today we'll take you down and virtually you are going to go to the entire coastline of North Carolina. Okay, great. Um, all journeys... The North Carolina come through several different airports, and one of the easiest ways to get to the Outer Banks to start your journey is to come into the Norfolk International Airport in Virginia. And your first stop, you're gonna you're gonna drive about 72 miles and come into Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, where you're gonna spend two nights. There's plenty to do on the Outer Banks, or just relax on the beach. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this was the first beach that I ever went to. And it has stayed true in my heart, as the other beaches in North Carolina have as well. Um, what you're seeing here is Jockey's Ridge State Park, one of our stellar state parks, and uh, the home to the largest sand dune on the East Coast. A great place to fly kites, go hang gliding. Um, when you get to the top of Jockey's Ridge, you can see the ocean on one side and the sound on the other side. It's just absolutely breathtaking. Some other things to do at the Outer Banks is you can visit the Wright Brothers National Memorial. Um, this is the place where motorized flight started. Um, they wanted a place that was secluded away from the media but had good wind, so they picked the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And you can, recre you can recreate all of the four journeys that they took um, to get that motorized flight. 
And as I said, it's right on the sound. Um, these are barrier islands that stick 20 miles out into the ocean. So you have these beautiful um, lighthouses that pepper the coast, and as well as beautiful sunrises, sunsets. Um, and this is a picture of uh, the Roanoke Island Lighthouse, a smaller island, but home to so many other wonderful attractions. One of those attractions is the Elizabethan Gardens. Um, it the, the Elizabethan Gardens are in this particular area because before Jamestown was settled, uh, there was a, a place called um, Fort Raleigh, and it was named after Sir Walter Raleigh, and it was the first settlement in the New World. Unfortunately, they disappeared, and so there's a, now there's an outdoor drama every summer called The Lost Colony, and you can go see this uh, outdoor drama, and right next to it are these beautiful gardens, and they are filled with things that are native to the region. And then about an hour south of that, still on these barrier islands, is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. You'll be on the National Seashore, uh, which is one of the first national seashores in the country. And all that really means is it's a national park, but it's at the ocean. And then you're going to take a ferry. The only way to get to the Ocracoke Island, the next island you're going to visit down there, is, is on this car ferry. Um, you can, it's about a 45-minute ride. And then you're going to spend about a half a day uh, on Ocracoke, because Ocracoke Island is only 10 miles long, and you really pretty much have to take the ferry to get there. And um, from there, you can get to the restaurants. And in 2006, Dr. Beach named Ocracoke Beach the number one beach in the country. So it's a great place to just relax and totally feel like you have gotten away from all society. It's a great place. And from there, you can buy tickets to a three-hour ferry ride that'll bring you back to the mainland. And you'll go to Beaufort, Moorhead City, the Atlantic Beach area, or Cape Lookout area, as we like to call it. Lots of great places to um, sit for dinner and see the sunset. And then in the morning, you can catch the sunrise as well because these, base, these beaches face south. So you get both the sunrise and the sunset. And from on all of our beaches, there's so many family-friendly things to do. You can fly kites, you can uh, ride bikes. You know, it's just, it's this wonderful coastline of the southeastern U.S. that is so inviting to everyone. One of the special things that we have um, at the Cape Lookout National Seashore, um, as you take the ferry from the mainland out to where the Cape Lookout uh, Lighthouse is, uh, you will pass an island called Shackleford Banks, and it is home to two of the herds of wild mustangs that we have in the state. These, these horses are descendants from the Spanish explorers that came over over 500 years ago. These horses are still wild, um, but they are protected by some um, foundations that make sure that they don't get diseased or you know not human contact those kinds of things but they are wild horses and, and they you can see them just walking around and then from from the cape lookout area we're going to go down to wilmington and wilmington and beaches is is the convention visitors bureau's name because there's three beaches that really encompass this area so um this is a picture of Carolina Beach, one of the three, Carolina, Curie, and Wrightsville beaches, um, all beautiful, beautiful beaches. And in the main town is Wilmington. And Wilmington is home to Screen Gem Studios, East Coast home, and uh, nicknamed Hollywood East because there's always some kind of filming going on there, whether it's a movie, commercials, TV shows, some of the shows you may have seen, um, One Tree Hill, Dawson's Creek, uh, they did Iron Man 3 there, um, and um, several other movies throughout the years. And from, from there, we're going to just sort of scroll through to our coastline. Um, this is Curry Beach in Fort Fisher. Beautiful, breathtaking, wide, wide beaches. 
really nice and very uh, unpopulated. It's not like you're going to be sitting two feet from, from the next person. You know, you have lots of wide open spaces. Great restaurants. And the battleship, this is the USS North Carolina battleship. It was um, in World War II. You can take tours of the battleship. Um, it's very, very educational and really interesting to, to go through. And you can visit all the areas in the battleship, the, where the mess hall was, where the sleeping quarters, where the doctor. I mean, it was re it's really interesting to go through and do a tour of the battleship, which is right there on the Cape Fear River. Historic Fort Fisher, um, also worth a visit, um, a Civil War fort that is still, you can still see the remnants and they have a great historical uh, videos there of what took place. And then the Venus flytrap. We've seen these in movies before where they're, you know, six feet tall and they take in people. These are the real Venus flytraps and it's the only place in the world where you can see a Venus flytrap. Um, they are protected. They, uh, you can see them sometimes out in nature, but they are also at the Carolina Beach State Park. Um, and they are absolutely fascinating to watch. And that's all I have for North Carolina. Next, I'm going to introduce you to Shannon Odom of South Carolina Parks and Rec, and he's going to take you down the coastline of South Carolina. Thank you, Heidi. I'm Shannon Odom, and I'm so glad to be able to present to you today a little bit about South Carolina. I'm originally from Charleston and have lived there for about 20 years and have some great memories of growing up, going to Myrtle Beach in high school with church groups, and then later during senior week, and then camping on barrier islands that um, are just a, a wonderful aspect of the coast. So I'm very happy to present to you today. As you cross the border, from our northern neighbor on scenic highway 17 it's about a two hour drive to myrtle beach about 84 miles the hub of fun and sun in the middle of the grand strand 60 miles of gorgeous wide beaches it offers a dazzling variety of entertainment nature history and dining for people of all ages of course relaxing at the beach is where you'll want to go once there spend the day building sand castles boogie boarding and hunting for shark's teeth the oceanfront Myrtle Beach Boardwalk runs along restaurants, bars, a fishing pier, an arcade, and the famous 187-foot sky wheel. Also, Myrtle Beach is home to Broadway at the Beach, Alabama Theater, the Carolina Opry, and authentic Southern music in a wholesome family atmosphere. And Ripley's Aquarium is where your clients can have hands-on experience with sea life, visiting exhibits like Rio Amazon. Planet Jellies in the Penguin Playhouse, or walk along Sea Rays in a viewing tunnel. Stay a day or two or three, there's so much to do. Your next stop in South Carolina will take you down Highway 17 towards the Hammond Coast, where you'll step back in time when beaches were quiet places of solitude. Make sure to stop at Huntington Beach State Park, where you can find three miles of pristine beaches for relaxing, swimming, or running. And Adelaide Castle, a National Historic Landmark, is an awesome sight to see. Just down the road, you'll find Brook Green Gardens, the largest outdoor sculpture garden in the U.S., comprised of roughly 1,400 sculptures that dot the property and represent the works of every era of American sculpture from the 1800s to the present. Next, make a lunch stop in Georgetown. It's one of the oldest cities in the U.S., founded in 1729 full of charming buildings, history, museums, quaint shops, and lovely cafes. You're going to want to make sure there's time for an indoor itinerary for a harbor walk before continuing back on Highway 17, south towards Charleston. Day three and four comprises of historic Charleston. Experience the charm of the historic southern city with combined contemporary vibes of southern coastal culture with its second to none restaurant scene, beautiful oceanfront resorts, and enduring cultural roots. Charleston's historic district is not to be missed. Charleston is also full of rooftop bars and restaurants where you can enjoy a view of the harbor or church steeples that dot the skyline. 
often referred to as the Holy City, Charleston is a haven for history buffs and beachgoers. It is said it's got its name from dozens of church steeples and synagogues, but it has also been known for the religious tolerance since the 1700s. So people from all over the world flock to Charleston for religious freedom. There are numerous companies that provide guided walking tours, carriage rides, and rickshaws, or you can just wander the cobblestone streets at your leisure. Charleston has been named the number one city in the U.S. by Travel and Leisure for seven consecutive years and one of two cities on the list of the top 20 cities in the world. Our great southern neighbor from New Orleans claimed the second spot. This is a huge distinction for us. The next day, head towards Keough Island Golf Resort, which is situated on 10,000 acres of Barrier Island, 40 minutes south of Charleston. The Ocean Course will be host for the 2021 PGA Championship this coming May. Near Kiowa, on Johns Island, is a small rural side road just off the direct route. This will take visitors on a short, less than one mile drive down an unpaved road to the majestic Angel Oak. The magnificent tree is considered by many to be the oldest living oak east of the Mississippi, roughly four to 500 years old. It features a massive trunk measuring 28 feet in circumference and limbs that stretch out over 187 feet providing over 17,000 square feet of shade. Drive through Wadmala Island, south of Charleston, to see Camellia census, tea plants that grow at the Charleston Tea Garden, used by American Classic Tea and is the only tea grown in America. Afterwards, continue on Highway 700 east towards Charleston. Take the Ashley River Road from there to find Drayton Hall, Magnolia Plantation Gardens, and Middleton Place. You'll find moving experiences about African-American slavery and the antebellum South. Then continue back towards Charleston as this road takes you across the Cooper River where you can check out Mount Pleasant and the Isle of Palms. Day five, you'll head down towards Buford and Bluffton and Hilton Head. Hilton Head is one of the South's most luxurious beach destinations, dotted with world-class golf courses, renowned restaurants, Superb shopping and white sandy beaches as far as the eye can see, this resort is just right for relaxing. In addition to its premier accommodations and scenic beauty, Hilton Head also offers exciting cultural scenes to explore. Take a stroll along the Sea Pines Resort Yacht Harbor and visit the famous lighthouse, enjoy shopping and dining, or watch dolphins swim in Calabogie Sound. Discover the deep history of the Gola descendants of enslaved people who lived and still live on the coastal barrier islands and their deep-rooted history in South Carolina's low country. Also, be sure to view wildlife on dolphin cruise and see why Hilton Head is one of the top islands in North America. Buford is located on Port Royal Island, one of the largest sea islands along the southeast Atlantic coast. It's only one of a handful of U.S. towns that has had its entire downtown designated a historic district by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. This coastal town has wonderful bed and breakfast for lodging, restaurants that serve fresh local fare, and Bluffton will take you back in time with its well-preserved downtown on the banks of the May River, take a walking tour, and experience museums and art galleries. Hunting Island State Park features the state's only public original lighthouse where visitors travel 130 feet up to spectacular views. Five miles of pristine beaches, trails, thousands of acres of marsh and maritime forest, a saltwater lagoon, and an ocean inlet are all part of the park's natural allure. A bonus tip, when walking through Charleston's historic district, be sure not to miss charming streets like Legree and Orange Streets, which are south of Broad Street, and quaint alleys like Longitude Lane, Stoll's Alley, and Beedon's Alley, where you'll find items from the past, such as earthquake bolts, hitching posts, ornate ironworks, copper lanterns. They're all reminiscent of a bygone era. And that completes our tour of coastal South Carolina, but there is also much more to discover in South Carolina, and we invite you and your clients to come visit our website, discoversouthcarolina.com, for more information as you help plan your client's next road trip to the authentic South. And now to my neighbor to the south, please meet Lacey Cameron from Explore Georgia. 
Okay, thank you, Shannon. I'm Lacey Cameron, and I'm excited to help you explore Georgia as we go on this journey on the Georgia's coast. One of my favorite coastal cities is Savannah. It's near and dear to me because of my family history. I have family there. And one of my, our favorite things to do in, on, in Savannah is visit the riverfront. And hopefully that's something that you'll have an opportunity to do on your next trip to Savannah. Whether you seek history, nature, nightlife, or just to be left alone, Georgia has a beach for you. The coast of Georgia is roughly 110 miles and includes 15 barrier islands, four of which are accessible by car and have become popular resort destinations. The rest of Georgia's islands require transportation by boat. Georgia's beaches are very different from what you might expect from Florida or California. They are virtually unsoiled natural landscapes. So let's begin our five-day itinerary. On day one and two, you'll spend time in Savannah and on Tybee Island. Savannah is a charming southern escape where art, period architecture, trendy boutiques, and ghost stories are all set under a veil of Spanish moss. Savannah is a place where cuisine comes straight from the coast and cocktails are served at every meal. Consistently named one of the world's friendliest cities by Conde Nast Traveler readers, the coastal town has, has a world-class reputation for hospitality and grace. Some of the many things you can explore in Savannah include Savannah's Historic Squares, a fantastic overview of the city on the Savannah Trolley Tours, visiting one of the many historic house museums, checking out the only prohibition museum in the country as you stroll along the riverfront, one of my favorite things to do. While on the riverfront, be sure to explore the local arts and shops in the city market. Visit Southern Gothic Bonaventure Cemetery and finish off your visit with a contemporary art section of the, of the historic Savannah Squares. While visiting the contemporary art section, be sure to explore SCAD, the Museum of Art, featuring classic art, modern art, architecture, and followed by a visit to the Telefair Museum. Later in the evening, one of the many award-winning restaurants will be at your fingertips. Make sure you stop by and experience the dark side of a ghost tour if you dare later after dinner. On day two, you'll enjoy a beautiful beach day on the beautiful Tybee Island and enjoy a meal at the Crab Shack. On day three, you will continue your itinerary as you head down the coast into the Golden Isles. Take a pit, stop, a pit stop, though, on the coastal village town of Darien. Dine on wild Georgia shrimp and one of the dockside restaurants while admiring the fleet of shrimp boats that harvest them. After your day trip to Darien, you will arrive on the beautiful Golden Isles as you continue your journey, and you will spend one night in St. Simon and one on Jekyll Island. I'm going to start off, though, in Brunswick. Nestled along our coast lies the mainland city of Brunswick. This is a must-stop coastal city for its attractions and restaurants in their historic downtown and the causeway into the astonishing beauty, mild weather, and natural radiance that is the Golden Isles. From a, from a historical perspective, early explorers traveled from afar and waded ashore in pursuit of glittering treasures and riches. Wealthy Lond Londoners in establishing a coastal colony in this area gave our coast the well-deserved denomination of the Golden Islands. The color gold also prevails in the hues of our beautiful sandy beaches, in the warmth of the summer sun, in the shade of the vast marsh grass grasses in the winter. The Golden Isles consists of four beautiful barrier islands, including St. Simon's Island, Sea Island, Little St. Simon Island, and Jekyll Island. Let's start with St. Simon's Island. You will want to stroll along the St. Simon Island Pier. Visit the Pier Village, Red Fern Village for numerous shopping and dining options. Hunt for the tree spirits and the majestic oak trees. Climb your history buff on one of the many historic sites and museums. Climb to the top for breathtaking views from the St. Simon Lighthouse Museum and visit Fort, Fort Frederica Natural, National Monument and definitely enjoy the many delicious dining options. Alas, you will arrive into Jekyll Island. Untouched stretches of marshland punctuated by small islands known as hammocks define the breathtaking landscape of the Golden Isles. Take into the beauty of the coastal Georgia as you head over the causeway from St. Simon to Jekyll Island. 
You won't want to miss strolling the Oak Line Historic District and seeing its beautiful mansions and crown jewel. The Jekyll Island Club Hotel. Dive deeper into the island's rich history with a visit to the Mosaic Jekyll Island, or I'm sorry, the Mosaic Jekyll Historic Museum. Really cool museum. Visit the Georgia Sea Turtle Center. A sea turtle re rehabilitation research and education facility providing state-of-the-art emergency care to the sick and injured sea turtles. Explore the lives of sea turtles and other Native American <laughs> other Native animals through daily education programs and gallery exhibits. Glimpse into the hospital where sea turtles are treated. See our sea turtle patients in the rehabilitation pavilion and learn how our research is helping sea turtles in Georgia and throughout the world. Driftwood Beach. Make sure you get your cameras ready for a visit to the picturesque Driftwood Beach. We suggest you rent a bike and take into the entire island on the bike. After a wonderful day and night on Jekyll, you'll be ready to head out for your next adventure at Georgia's National Seashore, Cumberland Island. On day five, you will head to St. Mary's, where you will catch the Cumberland Island Ferry to visit Cumberland Island's National Seashore. Be sure to pre-book your ferry tickets and pack your picnic lunch for a day of exploration. In your trip in Kingsland, our corner of the beautiful Georgia coast, located on Interstate 95 at the Georgia-Florida state line. Spend the night and embrace our small town southern charm and hospitality, blended with the comfort of new hotels, restaurants, and easy Interstate 95 access. Ooh, the bonus tip. So Jekyll Island commissions a group of highly skilled artisans from across the U.S to create an array of stunning handwork glass globes. During this month, or during this two month long program, Beach Buddies are responsible for hiding these floats in various locations across the island for lucky visitors to find. And the best part, the treasure hunt is 100% finders keepers. So you're gonna take a ferry to the white sand beach of Cumberland Island and unwind in the enchantment of untouched natural beauty. The history of the rich and famous and thrill of pounding hoof beats as the wild horses approach the dunes. Glide by sleeping alligators and native birds exploring the mysteries of the mirrored black waters of the Okefenokee Swamp. Challenging golf quietly exists among tidal creeks and breathtaking march views. Your vacation memories await you, so explore, discover, shop, or just relax the day away, but don't miss the experience. Thank you again for allowing me to explore Georgia and your client's next road trip to the authentic South. So thanks, Lacey and Shannon and Heidi. That concludes our program, and we sincerely hope that this has inspired and provided some professional tips to plan those road trips for your clients late fall and early into 2021. Let's make plans to enjoy the mild weather beauty and splendor of the pristine coastlines from North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Culinary delights, wonderful hotels, inns, bed and breakfasts, and of course, that world-renowned Southern hospitality. Please use ATI's Drive America online booking system to create that one-of-a-kind custom itinerary for each and every client. Thank you to our friends at Travel Mole for organizing this webinar and making sure that the travel agent community hears about these terrific itineraries. Our very best wishes soon, and we hope to see you along coastal Carolinas and Georgia's coast very soon. Y'all have a great day. Well, thank you, Liz and team, for showcasing those amazing destinations to our audience today. Um, the Carolina coast, North Carolina coast, South Carolina coast, and Georgia coast are really um, areas that I think are perfectly uh, set up um, for outdoor activities, exploration, during this COVID period. And so we're so proud to partner with um, those destinations and Travel South in creating three itineraries that you can book um, prepackaged on a prepackaged basis or to design your own custom um, itinerary on our Drive America platform. And so I'd like to um, introduce Jenny, our um, Vice President of Sales, um, to do a little demo that's a different uh, kind of approach today. Um, on how to build a, a road trip for a potential customer. Um, so we're going to uh, see Jenny role play as an agent 
uh, like uh, many of those on the um, webinar today uh, with a customer walking him through how to book uh, this type of road trip with um, his family in mind uh, over the Thanksgiving holidays. So with that, I'm going to uh, let Jenny take it from here. Hi, Hi there, Brandon. How are you? <laughs> hey, it's so good to see you again. Nice to see you online this time, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Agency. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I'm excited to help you and your family. It was nice just chatting a little bit via phone. And today I'm hoping to help you and your family plan the perfect uh, vacation for Thanksgiving. So my understanding is that you want to go to Charleston and Savannah and you'd like to kind of make a road trip out of it. And you're traveling yeah. with your parents as well and your family. So why don't you share just a little bit about uh, what you had in mind so okay. we can be going on designing your perfect trip. Sure. So this is going to be a different trip than the ones we've taken before. We want to splurge on this one because my parents' cruise mm -hmm. that got canceled and our European trip got canceled as well. So we've kind of stockpiled some money for this past year and we really want to have a memorable experience. Um, so it'll be my mom and dad, uh, my wife and I, and our two children. So it's really important that everybody has something along this trip that they're happy with. So my right. parents are happy. Um, I want to do something for my kids. Maybe we can hit an amusement park on the way there or on the way back. I love your feedback on that as well. And we've never gone to this part of the U.S. before, even though my parents live in Naples and we live here in Tampa, we've never gone over here. So love, love, love to hear your suggestions. Well, we're really excited, obviously, to help you plan this. And I love Charleston and Savannah. I've been there myself. It's been a couple of years, but the architecture and the history and the food, amazing. So I'm sure that we're going to get this uh, perfect for you. So are there certain things that uh, you're interested in? I know that you golf, if I recall yeah. correctly. Is that right? Yeah. My father and I would love probably to golf at least two days. So if there is a course anywhere from Tampa to uh, Charleston, I mean, we're, we're open to any of those places, of course, pop, you know, public golf courses, but I would say two, I think that would make pops really happy. Nice. Okay. I got it. And then we have to take into consideration your kids and, and obviously the ladies as well. <laughs> so perhaps some spas. What do you think? Yeah, so I, we want to pamper our beautiful wives. So I know they would love to have a couple spa days, uh, Manny Petties. And for the children, I, I would really love for them to be able to have one day where they feel that it's about them. So if there is a day uh, from Tampa up and back at an amusement park, definitely would be open to that as well. Beautiful. So I have this new uh, road trip planning system that I want to use for your booking because I think it'll be really nice. You're going to be able to follow along and so forth. And it's uh, www.americantours.com and it's the Drive America road trip uh, planning okay. system. I'm going to show that to you so you can follow along. Okay. And then we'll uh, a couple of the, um, the hotels that I had in mind based on okay. uh, you know where I've stayed myself. So, I, I um, see it. It popped just right up here on the screen. This is excellent. Beautiful. All right. So let's get started. So I think that it would be okay for you to drive from Tampa. You said that your parents are coming up, so they're going to stay with you the Friday before Thanksgiving, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we'll leave on that Saturday, and that's the 20th. So I think it's okay to drive up to, see, um, to Savannah from Tampa. I mean, it's like... Ooh or five hours, but I think it's doable and, and should be fine. So how about we okay. start with Savannah to kind of get going and it's such a beautiful city and I recommend that we stay in downtown so that you can walk to everything, be easy for the kids. There's a little trolley downtown and so forth and it's really, really beautiful. Okay, great. I've never been to Savannah before. I heard beautiful things about it, so definitely we love history, we love walking, and uh, any kind of tours in any of these cities, we'd love to uh, take in as well. Beautiful. All righty, so I'm going to start adding Savannah. Great. And there's a little hotel downtown that I really uh, enjoyed staying at. It's Kimpton. 
uh, okay. Kingdom. And I'm going to see if that's available first, because I really think that uh, it's part of IHG. So they have really good COVID procedures in place and so forth, which I know is important to yeah. you and your family. So let's see if that's available first. But it's really boutique-y. It's cute. It's right in the historic district. So let's see. So on Friday, you're staying with your parents or the parents are staying with you. And then we'll do two nights in Savannah is my recommendation to get the most out of the city. I think you have to be there for two okay. nights. Yes. Okay. So the Kimpton Bryce is available. So let's look at the room categories here. I recommend that we stay away from the non-refundable just in case, you know, there might be some things that change. Who knows? So let's be on the side. We're going to start booking your room and then we'll go back and book your parents' room a little bit later. So let's perfect the itinerary the way that you want it. And then we'll just okay. add rooms later. So I have the standard room here with two queen beds, which I think is perfect. And yep. uh, no resort fee too. So that's good. And you can cancel it all the way up until, you know, right before you leave, which is also good. So I think this is okay. a good um, hotel. So let me just show you. I wanted to show you just a description. Oh, beautiful. Really quickly, just so that you can see it. And you can see a picture here of the of the room. So uh, the Kimpton Bryce is like any good Southern Belle, beautiful and poised on the outside and a bit sassy and rebellious on the inside. So mm -hmm. I think goes to show for you and your family and then for your parents too right so i think it's i think it will be perfect okay. um, walking distance everything what do you think yeah we've stayed at a kempton property once before so we know them well and we love um the lobbies of kempton hotels so i'm definitely interested in this one very good so then i'm gonna go ahead and book the two queen beds for your family so that um I think that's what you wanted, right? Two queen beds for, yep. for your family, and then we'll do a king for your parents. That'd be great. Perfect. And um, you, re you can request that we're on the same floor? Yes, absolutely. I'll be able to call the hotel and make sure that even if they have interconnecting rooms, uh, we can see if we can get that. Great. So you'll see here that it's located right on the river almost. Ooh. Really perfect. So. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we get Savannah for starting on the 21st and then for two nights. So then uh, as you drive up to Charleston, I wanted to recommend to you that you actually stop in Hilton Head. Have you been to Hilton okay. Head? No, I have not. I heard they have amazing golf courses there. Exactly. So that's what I was thinking. And um, it's really perfect. It's a very short drive, but it's perfect to stay between Savannah and Charleston. So I really recommend that because then... Um, you get to golf, the ladies get to spa, and we'll pick a good resort for you. And the, um, the resort I had in mind also have great pool and activities for the kids. Okay. So add Hilton Head here for you. Okay. And the hotel I had in mind is the Omni. Mm -hmm. uh, it really has everything that you need. And I recommend here again, so that you have enough time um, to to golf that you stay there for two nights so okay. let me see. I wanted you to see them the so you see here the pool that they have for the kids right okay it's really beautiful it's stunning resort on the beach and it has several uh, awards which is nice there is a resort fee so I wanted to let you know that you have to pay $25 per room per night uh, when you're okay. there but you know as long as you know it and then you prepared for it so what do you think I'm looking at this right now, and I just saw number one uh, with Condé Nast Traveler. So that's right. good to know. Yeah. So actually, uh, let's see here. I wanted to make sure that we booked the resort view, resort view suite with two queen beds for you. And again, okay. resort fee um, is payable there, and you can cancel all the way up until the 20th of November. So I think that will be good. What do you think? Okay. Yep. I feel good about that. So you'll see here that the system will actually follow along here. Mm -hmm. So let's you have first your first destination in Savannah and then the second here in Hilton Head. Um, and we'll okay. look at the um, map for you here. So you see okay. here that oh, great. a short drive, right? All so right. then mm -hmm. to Charleston. So let's add Charleston here. And I think yeah. you mentioned that you wanted to splurge. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend Is, now, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would it be my responsibility or would you handle 
um, doing the concierge items such as spa days and golf? I'm happy to help you with that. It's really up to you. Uh, okay. What you, you know, if if you're ready to do it now, I can certainly make the phone call to the hotel, uh, or if you okay. want to you know, uh, decide when you get there. Either or is, is perfect, and I'd be happy to help with that. Okay, right, thank you. To, to show you um, the Belmont Charleston Place Hotel. And you had mentioned you wanted to splurge. It's a little bit pricey, but um, but I definitely wanted to show you this. And this okay. is really um, amazing hotel. So it's very elegant to come in. There's you know, this amazing fountain. It's really beautiful. So let me see if I can pull it up here for you to see. So you can see here, it's right mm -hmm. in the historic district. You can walk to everything. Um, it has, you know, a spa, a pool. So for the ladies and the kids, yeah. and you know, it's it's just amazing property. It is a little bit pricey, so we'll take a look at the at the prices here. But I think if you're gonna stay here, um, this is the way to go. So what do you think? Okay. I think, I mean, we were already splurging a little bit when we were going to Europe, and I know that my mother and father had a, a balcony on their cruise ship, so we can we can pay a little extra. I, we really want to enjoy this trip. We want to have memories. So let's go ahead and stay here for three days. I think that that would be fine. We can always change that later. Okay. Let me just double check on the availability here. Beautiful. We actually do have that one king bed for balcony. So let's make sure that we actually book that for your parents. But I Great. want to make sure you have two beds and a good here. You can also cancel up until the 22nd. So I'm going to go ahead okay. and book that for you. Okay. Great. Let's see here. Here we go. All right. So let's look at the map again. So now we have Savannah, Hilton Head, Charleston. And I'm going to go ahead and actually save because it keeps telling me that I should save mm -hmm. it. Definitely make sure. sure that we save this as Brandon's. Sure. Family Thanksgiving. Yes, that's excellent. 20. All right. <laughs> I wanted to show you something that's really exciting too, and that is the documentation that I'm going to send to you um, just about a week before you leave. So this is just an example of what it looks like, but you'll have a website for you and your family, and you'll have an app. Okay. And it will basically give information. And this is just an example of what it looks like for something on the West Coast. It'll have information about Savannah and about Charleston and so forth and Hilton Head. So you'll be able to read about the history and so forth. It has all the hotel information for you. And then you'll be able to have that on the app and you can share that with your mom and dad as well. And uh, I think that'll be something that'll be really important for you. It's very unique. I love it. All right. So let me finish up here. Add your parents room and then i'll give you a call back and we can wrap this up and we can talk about the activities and all the fun because i know that you also wanted to have thanksgiving dinner in charleston and i know that they're doing a nice thanksgiving dinner that we can book for you at the hotel so what do you think that's great yeah definitely thanksgiving dinner golf spas i really look forward to hearing back from you beautiful thanks so much brandon i'll talk to you in a bit all right have a great day Bye bye all right, so now I have prepared both rooms, both Brandon's rooms and Brandon's parents' room. And this is a really nice booking. When I add it up, it is uh, a little bit more than $5,800. And that means that I get access to ATI Concierge Services. So the ATI Concierge Service allows me to get quotes on private tours or private transportation things that may or may not be available online on the booking engine. So I'm going to call my customer back and I'm going to process the booking and I'm going to suggest some of these private tours that the ATI concierge service offers me. And then let's see if he's interested. And the best part is that I get commission on every single service that I book with ATI. All right. Well, thank you, Jenny, for that uh, tutorial. It was a really great way, I think, to show our audience today how you can uh, customize, uh, um, build a road trip from scratch for one of their customers and um, taking into account family considerations and whatnot, and also showing how the um, concierge service can be used. So I uh, really appreciate this creative way of, of showing that. Uh, and I wanna thank everyone for joining. 
us today and um, we're here to answer questions now, either myself or, or Liz from Travel South to answer questions about the functionality, the services, or um, the destinations that were showcased uh, during this webinar today. Thank you again for attending and uh, we look forward to seeing you on americantours.com. Take care.